Hello everyone. Today we are going to be talking about phonemic transcriptions. I know it sounds like a fancy term, and it is, but this relates to phonetics and phonology, which is a part of linguistics. And linguistics refers to the study of language. Therefore, this lesson is a bit different from the others because usually we would tackle grammar topics in English. But this, I mean, this is still related to English, of course, but this deals with pronunciation, phonetics, right? So before we even attempt, to understand what a phonemic transcription is, we need to know what a transcription is, right? So a transcription is a systematic representation of spoken language in written form, right? So that is the definition of a transcription. So many of you have performed transcriptions within your life. Anytime you were in a class and you were directed by the teacher to, to write what you hear, that is a form of transcription because you're writing, you're producing written, you're producing written form for what you hear, right? So you're converting audio to, to written text, right? Or uh, yes, or uh, yeah, what you hear. So if you are listening to something and you're required to write what you hear, that's called transcribing, right? There are many different types of transcriptions, right? So that is what we call a transcription, the systematic representation of spoken language in written form. So don't think that because it sounds fancy that you haven't done it before, yes. All of us have, have been in situations where the teacher dictated and we were required to write. Therefore, all of us have performed transcriptions. But when we talk about phonemic transcriptions, this is something, this is something, this is something different. This is a more technical term. This is based on the IPA, International Phonetic Alphabet. So if you are not familiar with the IPA, this is a, well, you could say, an, yes, an alphabet of symbols, which, and these symbols are, are used to represent sounds, right? This is what linguists use to transcribe sounds. Right? Represent them in written form. And I chose to address phonemic transcriptions today because phonemic transcriptions are what we call broad transcriptions. They're also called broad transcriptions. They only include the phonemes, which refer to the distinct sounds, the different sounds that comprise the word. Right? So they are not very detailed. And a person who is unfamiliar with linguistics is likely to understand them. Right? They are usually represented by the slash brackets and you will find them within dictionaries. Okay? So then the next question is going to be so what's the difference between a phonemic and a phonetic? Now, a phonetic transcription is phonetic transcriptions we, we have to do that later but in a phonetic transcription the difference is the difference is not only that different brackets are used but also the fact that phonetic transcriptions are more detailed right phonetic transcriptions use square brackets or uh, yes square brackets and they contain a lot more detail as far as the pronunciation of the word, right? Phonetic transcriptions are also called narrow transcriptions. 
and it will be very difficult not would be it yes it will be difficult for persons who are unfamiliar with linguistics to understand them right but the phonetic transcription is going to be a true representation of how the word is pronounced because it just it not only includes the sounds the general sounds but it actually includes the variation so you may have phonological processes being represented like aspiration, the bloody puff of air, right? That will be represented in a phonetic transcription. I'm, and I'm going to show you an example of a phonetic transcription. It'll be on the screen somewhere, right? But we're not going to worry our head with those right now. We're just going to focus on phonemic. Phonemic, only focus on the individual sounds, right? The sounds that can be perceived but we don't focus on the variation that can occur so generally what the word would sound like right and remember they are represented by the slash brackets and you'll see them in dictionaries so when you look in it look look up the meaning of a word in a dictionary and you see examples of these these show you how the word is generally pronounced, the different sounds within the word, right? So these are what we call phonemic transcriptions, right? So you have to know this, the IPA chart in order to transcribe these, right? You need to know the IPA chart, right? So I'm not going to waste a lot of time going through all the different symbols and whatnot. You can review those symbols and then you can return to this video if you need to, right? So these symbols represent a particular sound that will be found within the word, all right? So let's look at some examples. Sing, sing, right? So we have the S, S, right? E, E, right? And an example of this particular vowel sound will be found in words like kit, eh, eh, eh. So say, ing. So that ng sound, that ng, ing, ing, that you would find within like words like, I, that words that end in ing, etc. That will be represented by this symbol. An N with a stroke at the bottom. So sing, sing. Yep. Seldom, of course, S. -S a, C, A, A. This particular uh, symbol represents the a long vowel, right? The vowel. A, which you, you would find in words like bake, cake, right? This is the vowel sound that would, that would make. That A, yeah. So that, that A sound, this is the vowel that, this is how this is represented. A, as in bake or, or cake, right? So you start, say, L, L, you hear the L, uh-huh. D, 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 uh, this is the sound that you would hear in the word at the end of the word comma, uh, 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 hmm. So you have seldom. So these are all the sounds that can be found within that word. Mm -hmm. Three, baptize. Ba, B, A, A is the vowel sound that would be found in words like bat and trap, a, a, p, uh -huh. bilabial plosive, p, uh, we have t, i, i, this is what, an example of a diphthong, combination of two vowel sounds, i, z, and then as in Z, baptize. So we hear the Z. Baptize. Mm -hmm. 
So that I is represented by this because it forms a diphthong, right? Mm -hmm. I, 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 right? For pity, be here p, be here e. Once again, the e from k, right? T, e. So pity, pity. Mm -hmm. Feeling, f, f, e, which should be represented by the two e's, e. Is represented by that symbol, right? That's that sound E is represented by this symbol, mm -hmm. as in peel, f uh, feel, right? L, L, E. Once again, same sound as in get, ing, ing, ng, feeling, mm -hmm. feeling. All right. So we're going to practice some on our own to see if we understand, right? So we have she, sh, that's one song, which would be sh, sh, that is represented by this song here, sh, right? And then we have e, she, e, 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 right, e. Represented by that she, right? Then we have we have task, which would be t. Well, we have that t. A a a as in bat or trap. So a. Mm -hmm. S s. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. task. So we have different those different songs, right? Three taxing. Okay, we have t a a same song. K the x makes the k k k k. Uh huh. S k s s e. A, so as in K, as in kit, so, uh huh. And then NG forms the N. So, yep. This is what we have. Cherry. Now, this CH, CH sound, CH, is represented like this. Mm hmm. CH, 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 eh, eh. So we have the E, Ch, E, Re, Re, so we have the R, and E, E, as in um, receive, E, E. Mm -hmm. So this is how this would be represented phonemically. And mouth, we have M, 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 O, U. Ow, 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 ow. So that's a diphthong. Right? That's a diphthong. And then TH. This is a dental sound because the tongue has to go, has to be placed between the, uh, the teeth to produce that sound, right? So we call that a. That is TH, so there are two versions. There's a voice and there's a voiceless version. So, so that would be the softer one that is represented by this. So this is what we call a dental fricative, this, the TH sound. So that would be the, a voiceless dental fricative, right? So mouth, mouth. All right, so these are examples of phonemic transcriptions. So I need you to learn to familiarize yourselves with the symbols so that you can practice them. All right.
So I hope that this lesson was helpful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.